So I don't know if there's anyone in the audience who can advise the planning group or what the proper terminology is. Bill, you want to? No, Sequa, you're you're right on track. Uh, I don't know if you guys had a hard time hearing the speaker or not. Okay, well, I'm gonna talk a little loud. Okay, I'll talk loud and use the microphone. Okay, um, actually, some good comments here, and the county believes that, you know, this is Langside's one of their biggest assets also. And it's important to the community, it's important to me to get the thing cleaned up and, and to restore the water quality of the light. Excuse me? My name is Bill Sopra. So I'm here I'm, uh, with the County of San Diego, Department of Parks and Recreation, and I oversee development, design, and construction projects here. I'm the project manager on the Lakeside Skate Park, you know, which will be starting here in a few months. And uh, anyway, all the improvements that you see out here, uh, I touch it one way or another. So I'm trying to do a lot for the community, and I value it. I used to live here, but I still value your uh, some of the challenges that we have is the first thing that Janice mentioned, and that's the CEQA. It's the environmental uh, constraints that will prevent anything from moving forward. That's one aspect. That's the very first step. Looking long term, we're talking about millions of dollars, millions. It's not, not just $1 million, not just $2 million. We're talking over $3 million to dredge just, right now, just dredge one uh, basin. Okay? The biggest thing was trucking. We had a community meeting. No one's going to, right now, we heard you. The county heard you. We're not going to fill in these, these basins. Uh, that was made very clear. But we have to think long term. This is a huge task. Volunteers from the community at that meeting was all gone public. I appreciate that. I like that. People coming forward, they want to, the community wants to use uh, their own trucks, their own equipment to excavate and haul the material away and work with locals to get that material dumped somewhere. That's excellent. But the problem is, I don't think anyone's really grasped how big of a project this is. We're talking about almost 1,500 truckloads. And how many people can afford to be able to pay the gas to, for their vehicles, the equipment that has to run this to get the permits? I mean, it's, it's more than volunteers here. It's a very, very large project. get this thing done. I'm not encouraging. No. What I want to let you know is we can't give up. We need to keep pursuing and this is the first step. We can't not support the building. The, 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 the work is the easy part yeah. from general contractors. The work part is the easy part. The paperwork, the environmental part, that's the hard part. And we need to encourage you guys to get this done while we're still young. There is a positive part. We have a couple of volunteers. Kristen and Billy uh, volunteered to help uh, go after those uh, construction companies to try to get this thing to come together. But I think you're right on track as far as what Janice did mention uh, going forward and requesting the environmental be done. But we need money to do that. We don't have money right now to do that. 
some of the things that we are doing, the county is doing right now, I have a meeting out here with the DW to take a look at all the smoke grains going into the light here. And we're uh, looking at assessing those to see if we can stop the sediment from coming in here. Some of the biggest things that are happening right now is there's illegal excavations going out of people's property up on these hillsides. So, you know, we, we want to get the education out to those people and see if we can stop that and then create these bases that capture these, the sediment coming into the lake where we can uh, clean it out periodically and stop more from coming in here. It's a great idea for the community, uh, and I know it costs a lot of money to do it, and it's going to take time. But I'm thinking about, uh, you know me, I'm a nature guy, and I like all the little critters and the fish and the birds that come and nest there. And all I'm going to ask is if we can kind of be sensitive towards the animals, the birds that make it so special. We have uh, nesting killdare, apple sets stilts, and uh, many other kind of birds that you wouldn't normally see here unless there was water there. And what makes it unique is that the shoreline is, it's not steep, it's very shallow. So it's a gradual shallow and that's what attracts the birds. And I hope that we can uh, somehow not just go in there and dig a big hole, fill it in, but make it so that animals will come back because if it gets dredged wrong they will not come back and I think that's what makes it special over there it's it's a little on the wild side and it's really nice over there just take a walk over there and you'll see what I mean thank you um, do I have a question for you does the recommendation include consideration of um, ensuring that the dredging isn't done in such a way as to um, reduce the slope and impact to the wildlife the uh Various studies have been done on what should be done over there. Uh, one of the options, uh, not options, but proposals is to stabilize the shore bank, which is currently eroding in. Whatever is going to happen at their end will be 
clearly defined in the environmental documents, probably the options. And so that's the first step, though, is to get those options out there. Uh, I know the biology reports will no doubt require uh, protection of the wildlife. Uh, the reality is that while any extraction is going on, birds will come over to this side of the lake, hopefully, um, and then come back when everything's done.